unheard of. Hello, everybody. What is up? We're back. We're back for another one. I know it's been a little break, but you know who it is. It's your boy, BG, and I got uh, my my co-host with me, Jared. How, how's your week been going, Jared? Been good. Uh, coming down with a little bit of a sign of something. If, uh, if uh, people on the screen are watching on YouTube, you can see my nose is super red. Looks like I've been like snorting a substance you know uh (laughs) but no it's just because i've been having to blow my nose so much the past few days um other than that week's been okay we got family in town hunters here so that's going okay uh and i've just been studying for like job certifications trying to add on to the resume so uh in my free time so uh yeah, it's been good, man. Uh, but hey, tell us how it's been in Louisiana, because obviously, folks, we haven't been able to record for a while. Uh, we both got busy lives. So, how's that work life been out there the past few weeks? Oh um, man, it's been crazy, crazy, crazy. Just you know, working, you know, to the bone. You know, uh, just. Yeah, that's that's all. I, I haven't really been getting out and seeing much or doing much, but um, you know, just working and enjoying the money and enjoying uh, <clears throat> what little bit of off time I have out here. So you know, it's been pretty good. I'm I'm glad to be going home tomorrow, but only for tomorrow because I got to turn around and go out to uh, Illinois on Monday. So I'll be there for a week. And, yes. um, you know, that's, that's, that's the life moving, moving. Yeah. Uh, Hey, so in new Orleans for folks that are watching this on Monday, we recorded on Saturday night. Um, so in that new Orleans area with the final four and everything, has it been pretty crowded this past week? Um, not particularly really. I mean, I, I don't do much besides go to go to work and come back to the hotel, but um, not not a lot of. I mean, it hasn't been a lot of traffic or anything in my area. Yeah, dude, I gotta say, I don't know if you tuned into the games uh, before we get going, but the way they did the uh, Final Four stadium this year for the tournament, I thought was really cool with the uh, the court kind of being raised up onto a platform. Uh, yeah. I thought it was really cool. It it looked really cool to me having the players, you know, have their bench kind of underground in a way and not having all those reporters and dumb people like sitting on the sides where they don't need to be. So uh, <laughs> it looked really cool too on camera. So, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I have not caught any of the games yet. I've been on my, on my NBA grind lately. I've just been keeping up with, with the uh, professional style of, of basketball. So That's right, which uh, takes us right in. To the Atlanta Hawks, one of our favorite subjects, which uh, they've won uh, as of tonight when we're speaking. They just beat Brooklyn, but they's, they've also won uh, four straight, or is it five? I'm pretty it's sure five. Straight five. Now. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, man, I I knew that uh, we could get on a roll late. Sadly, it looks like we might still have to do the play in, but the team's looking pretty good. Yeah, bro, I'm I'm extremely excited about the team, and unfortunately, we don't have uh, John Collins in right now because of his finger and his foot. But hopefully, by the time it's either play in time or by, if we make it to the playoffs, by by the time it's playoffs time, um, that we'll have him back. But um, without him, the team is still looking pretty good, man. Yeah. Um, defensively, I mean, pretty good, but I mean. Uh, they were not really able to, uh, namely in like this game, to completely like shut down their uh, <clears throat> the big players. I mean, uh, KD was was uh, I think twenty was he eighteen for thirty one or or something like that. Yeah. He he didn't, he didn't shoot he didn't shoot very well. That's he got fifty five. I meant I meant Kyrie Kyrie. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. 
I want their <coughs> name to start with a K, so it, so it'd be throwing me off sometimes. Yeah, Kyrie, uh, he didn't he didn't have a very good shooting night, but um, KD of course went off for fifty five, and you know their their players are gonna like their star players, KD, and you know sometimes Kyrie is gonna do what they want, but they they did a good job in shutting down uh, the other players, Patty Mills, you know, the other guys. So tonight, I mean, I feel like they did what they had to do at, at home. I mean, it was Quavo night, you know. Qu- uh, Quavo, it was his birthday. And uh, you know, do you know who Quavo is? I know who Quavo is. I thought Quavo night was the night before. No, because they were wearing Quavo the night. they were wearing the peach tree jerseys, and then he gave his like fifty point jersey to Quavo, right? Or am I wrong? He might. I mean, he might. But I know tonight was Quavo night. I'm probably thinking of another game. Yeah. So. Uh, he was out, you know, they uh and uh yeah, it was a good it was a good win. It was a good team win tonight. I, what I like what I like the most about what they have what the Hawks have going right now is Trey is really getting into uh kind of like his lobbying more to to Clint and to Onyeka and you know getting everybody else involved, you know. Uh and Kevin. Kevin Herter, man, he had four back-to-back 20-point nights. So, so yeah. I mean, whenever whenever somebody else other than Trey can get going like that, you know, it's it's hard to stop the Hawks because, I mean, Trey is still going to do what he wants to do. And if you can have somebody else like Kevin or Bogey or Gallo going off for some points, I mean, it's, it's going to be an easy win for the, for the Hawks, you know. So I'm excited to see where they got what they got uh, coming next. Yeah, man. I uh, I hope it's good. the The East is so unpredictable right now, especially uh, I don't know, like with other teams like Miami that are basically about to fight their own dudes on the bench and their coaches, <laughs> but they still got a pretty good squad. Uh, Milwaukee's also looking really good right now. They are going on a tear as of late. Yeah. But, uh, um. Who did they play the other? Was it Milwaukee? No, it was the Nets that played the. Uh, they played Philadelphia right in uh, the overtime game. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a good. One. I watched the end of that one. That was that was a good that was a good game. I mean, that yeah, the East is. It's always it could be anybody's time in the East every yeah. season. So, thankfully, the Lakers are out of the play in right now. Uh, so, you know, like LeBron was telling people to keep that same energy. We keep in that same energy. Your team is still full of old dudes who can't do nothing. So, bro, I'm not going to lie to you. I totally, totally regret uh, when, before the season started. I was, I was like, man, the, the Lakers are going to look, are going to be scary. It, it's going to be, you know. You know who didn't say that? Might, yeah. Me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Hey, we know. But no, I, I really thought they were going to be the team to beat in the West, man. And then the, the way that that team has just fallen apart this season was kind of shocking to me, but also not too shocking at the same time. It's uh like really, I used I, to love watching uh Russell Westbrook play. The problem is he gets in his own way now, uh, as far as like being successful goes. He literally, if he could just learn how to pass the ball like 60% of the game, you know, instead of focusing on his own shots and just getting the ball to whoever's open, that team would be really good. But Russell Wilson is like a, you know, he's got to be the first one type dude. So that's uh, that's the Russell Westbrook. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Russell Westbrook. But yeah, Westbrook is literally like, He's got to have the ball like at all times. And on top of that, his play has significantly declined this year. Like he has looked awful. Uh, Bro, is him trying to is him trying to perfect that bank shot? I don't know what's going on, but the bank is, is just about closed for him. Well, you know, Skip Bayless doesn't call him Russell Westbrook for no reason. Like, yeah, hey. I don't know, man. Westbrook, he's probably about to be traded to his fifth team in the fifth year. Like he's uh he's he's dang near the end of it. Just goes to show that stats don't mean everything because uh they really could have made this work, but the problem is they got Russell Westbrook instead of somebody like Buddy Hield, who they had an opportunity to get, 
who would have been really good and made them look good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got LeBron and AD out right now for for injury and – uh, no, they no I mean, they they came back. Yeah, they they played against the Pelicans on a uh, Friday night, so they're oh, back. They did, they did yeah. play. Oh, okay. Uh, excuse me, my fault. Um, it's uh, I mean, I just I don't know. I don't know what what has become of that team, but I mean, not to hate on their downfall, but <laughs> I like to see it. Yeah, they they kind of suck. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> and. Um, I just knew when they traded for Westbrook, I told you, I was like, his history is kind of starting to precede him. Like, he hasn't done anything in the playoffs lately. (laughs) Uh, So, shoot. I mean, but who knows? Who knows uh, with LeBron and maybe next season, a couple seasons, he might be on a a completely different team and he'll win win a championship with them and then completely destroy their organization. Yeah. That's what he does, man. He goes around, say, like, "Hey, we're gonna win one title or maybe two, and then when I'm gone, this team's gonna just be at the bottom of the league for a little bit." <laughs> like uh, the Heat actually weren't terrible when he left, but they weren't great. Uh, Cleveland was always a dumpster fire before and after he gets there, but now they look really good. They've been drafting well. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know, man. <clears throat> I uh. I don't think we talked about it because we've been off, but uh, as far as like other sports news goes, and we don't have to stay on it really long at all, but how about like Tom Brady's unretirement? And I'm, I'm like, the dude d- didn't even, he wasn't even retired for like 40 days. He didn't miss a single game. He didn't miss a single practice. The dude was not even retired. No, no. He was just toying with the idea and then everybody celebrated <laughs> That, that he was gone and then he was like well let me let me show y'all something it's crazy i <laughs> i said the whole time i was like this doesn't seem right man why would he go out on like an instagram story you know the greatest of all time just didn't feel right yeah i like that uh what peyton manning said he's like I, I want all my stuff i sent you back i sent you a card yeah all the, uh and the gifts and stuff he was like you didn't even you would, probably didn't really even plan on retiring <laughs> bro that's crazy that's crazy and then they they go out and get um oh my god what is what is his name the uh wide receiver from from the patriots oh my, my the brain patriots is, yes Who'd My brain get? is melting right now. No, I thought they got they got Russell Gage from the Falcons. What? Yeah, Tampa Bay signed Russell Gage. No, I'm talking about um. Oh man. Oh, now are you? <laughs> what? <laughs> We've missed Hold quite on. a few things of sports news too because. This would have been a great week to have like Bryce or Drew on since they traded Matt Ryan as well from Atlanta to uh, Indianapolis. Yeah. And uh, we didn't talk about that. But, oh, well. Falcons are in rebuild mode, baby. Oh, yeah. And people are still asking if we're going to be contenders. And I, I'm. this is on the tip of my tongue. I, I still have to look this up, though. So I'll entertain entertain the people for just a little no. bit. They got a guard, Shaq Mason from the Patriots, but they they didn't. Uh, no, they didn't get anybody. If you're thinking of Julian Edelman, that was an April Fool's prank. Oh, was it? Yeah. <laughs> All right, cut the cut the camera, y'all. I'll, I'll see y'all later. <laughs> oh my God! What the. Okay, we're back. We're back, people. Um, <laughs> you were so convinced, too, dude. Like, LeBron, the pro- probably the same reason you thought LeBron was out, because he sent out a tweet saying he was done for the season. But it no, was an I April mean, Fool's been, prank because he came back that night. I, I mean, I knew he had been out, though, for real. Like, I know he had been sitting. I didn't know. I just didn't know that he had came back for that uh, for that other game yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, folks. Sports is back. I think we'll talk more about that Bro, next week. I was 
I was completely convinced. I thought Sports <laughs> Center uh, put that up, bro. They probably did, did they but everybody gets fooled on April Fool's Day, man. Bro, you gotta be freaking kidding me! I didn't, I didn't do any more investigation into it. I just thought he was going. I like, I was like, this, this MF Tom Brady is is going <laughs> is coming for the damn championship for real this time, and. Now to find out it was an April Fool's prank, I just Classic. everything is a lie. Classic everything April is a lie. Fools. <laughs> oh uh, my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. See, this is uh, you guys get to see me get pranked in in real time, dude. Speaking of uh, speaking of lies and things that were heard wide around the world, how about that slap from? You know, Big Willie to Chris Rock. <laughs> I don't, no. and obviously we're we're a couple of nobodies, so our opinion on it's not going to matter like at all. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me preface this with my opinion it does not matter. But I thought that was the funniest thing in the world, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. When it happened, and like it, like because it went viral like instantly, everybody knew. It. Like it was the slap heard around the world. Yeah. Uh, every everybody knew it. It, it happened instantly and uh the biggest question was was it fake or was it real and when i, I remember seeing it and i was like bro like that's real like i it has to be real i don't know because, man. I, I thought it was fake at first but, because like my question is that the way they censored what uh what chris rock said after he's after will slapped him i was like that has to be real like if it's if it's fake, why would they censor out, you know, his follow-up statement to it? Because because he literally said Will Smith just slapped the shit out of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so that was one of the leading factors of me thinking that it was real. Uh, but then I didn't even know they censored it because you know, like ninety-eight percent of the country, I was not watching the Oscars until oh, I, I saw it in the news that Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. Yeah, uh, like. And then they, uh, it was, uh, I think that they, they had an uncensored version from like um, Australia, Australia or something like that. Yeah. And they, they played it, and I was like, oh yeah, no, that it has to be real. But then most, most everybody was like, no, it's fake. It was staged. Chris Rock leaned into it and all this stuff, and I was like, come <laughs> on, bro, like nah, nah. But I mean, they, they had me convinced it was fake at first. But then after everything that came out about it, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, this is real. Like, he, like, I don't know. I don't know if he, like, deserved it or not. Because, I mean, he was telling jokes. And, I mean, he 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 touched a nerve with that, with that, uh, with that G.I. Jane joke. I mean. He didn't touch one. He didn't touch one with Will Smith, though. Will Smith laughed about it. Until he went up there and slapped him. <laughs> you know, Jada, and then he looked over at Jada and she was like, Yeah. Nah, you better go handle this. But um the joke wasn't, I mean, I don't the joke wasn't even funny, in my opinion. Well, look, Chris Rock is a legend, but I watched oh, yeah. I watched his last Netflix special on well on Netflix. I watched his last special and uh He's kind of lost it a little bit, man. He he don't have the same I, touch. Like I know, I know you're not talking about tambourine. I think so. Where he spends okay. like he spends half of the stand up routine just talking about how he has sex with single people now because yeah. he's divorced and he talks about how like Asians have sex different and stuff like that. Tambourine. Was that good, is bro. not funny, bro. Tambourine directed by Bo Burnham was it was good. I, nah. I thoroughly enjoyed that that you need, show. You need to go back and listen to the jokes, man. It wasn't that funny, but right. that doesn't mean he hasn't been like that forever because he's still a legend. But uh, oh, yeah. I'm just saying, uh, I thought obviously the physical slap was real because Chris Rock took it like a champ. But the only reason I thought it was staged was because Will Smith laughed. And then even after he goes up and slaps Chris Rock, he looks back smiling at Jada or whoever. <laughs> like, hey, did I do a good job? <laughs> yeah, did you like that? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, and then, and now everybody and their mama has an opinion about it that they were, oh, all the celebrities were shocked Dude. and traumatized. And, oh, woe is me. I saw a black man slap another black man on stage at the Oscars. Uh, this is the worst time of my life. Like, come on, bro, get a grip. Like, did you see that? Do you see that, uh, that interview with uh, Jim Carrey? Oh, yeah. Uh, where he's just like, oh, um, Hollywood is, uh, he said, he said there was something in mass or something like that. And, uh, just talking about how, you know, Will, Will basically did the worst thing possible by going up there and, and doing that. And I'm like, bro, like Jim Carrey needs to pick a battle because he goes to, he goes to so many award shows and, different and different events talking about how none of this matters and how I just showed up uh you know I I picked something stupid to come to and came you know and like oh but but him get but Chris Rock getting slapped is is somehow uh the the downfall of celebrities like come on bro you know, speaking of Jim Carrey, it's funny because he had that first interview where he's like, yeah, I would have sued Will Smith for like $200 million. Yes. But then a video resurfaces of him at an award show where he basically forced himself on the married Alicia Silverstone, like forcefully kissed her for like a solid 10 seconds where she was trying to like back up and everything. Next day, he's like, yeah, Sonic 2 might be my last film. I think I might retire. i'm like yeah yeah got his ass (laughs) see and that's like that's that's the thing like people people just take what is on everybody's mind fresh and then they want to have their own cutting you know opinion on it and and that's that is that is the worst thing especially if you're a celebrity because as soon as you see that i mean as soon as they say that somebody on the internet is going to pick is gonna is gonna um bring up something that you've done that was most likely 10 times worse yeah and just absolutely uh is this you uh it, them and it's just gonna be an embarrassment like i i thought the funniest part about will smith slapping chris rock was the fact that he actually won the oscar for best o- actor oh, yeah. right after that bro so like... <laughs> He goes up there and then he's like, I'm being called to like love people. And I'm I'm thinking, like, you just slapped Chris Rock. How are you loving people? <laughs> he said love. And then he said he was and uh protect people. And yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> like, like I said, I don't I don't know. I can't I can't speak on whether he was right or wrong in doing it, but all I know is people get slapped every day. So people just need to take this. And, you know, keep going with it. And unfortunately, like you see that Will Smith is uh, withdrawing from uh, the Academy now because of that. And they're like, oh, he needs to give back his Oscar. He needs to get back his Oscar. Like, come on, bro. Like, I wouldn't. No, hell no, I wouldn't. Yeah. I. It is weird. I, I also seriously thought it was staged just because there's articles every year about how the ratings have just gotten so awful for the Oscars. And I was like, oh, man, maybe this is their way of getting people to tune in every year. Get somebody like Will Smith to slap Chris Rock and then have him win Best Actor. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, the I saw this tweet, and it was funny. I mean, I saw it after the fact, but uh, somebody had tweeted that, like, uh, <laughs> the Oscar stage is surprisingly low, so anybody could just come up and dis- disrupt the show. Yeah, and just like an hour after that, fucking Will Smith comes up and slaps the taste out of Chris Rock's mouth, like that. Like, I will funny. say, of all films, man, how did Will Smith win Best Actor for this one? King Richard. King Richard. Like, I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen it, but I heard it. I mean, I heard it was good. So, I mean, it was good. I'm just saying, Will Smith has had better films where he should have won an Oscar. I feel like, but he didn't. Uh, I mean, I don't know. So maybe it was, maybe it's just his time because that that movie that Leonardo DiCaprio won an Oscar for I don't think anybody liked like that Revenant film yeah. where he gets mauled by a bear like nobody remembers that film. I mean I st- I haven't seen that one either so. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so I don't know. I, I I can't really speak on it, but I mean, I mean, I know Will Smith is a, a fairly decent, capable actor. So I mean, if oh I, yeah, I'm just know, saying he should have won it for like seven pounds or like Pursuit of Happiness. It, like he that's all I say for Pursuit of Happiness. No, no, he's been nominated. Like this was like his fourth nomination or fifth. I mean, yeah, he definitely should have won one for that. I mean, I would like to see what his competition was uh, in that, but uh, if he if he was even nominated, but um, but yeah, I mean, people people were giving him good praise for his performance in King Richard. So I mean, I, I guess yeah, he thought he deserved it. And he must have deserved it. But I mean, um, personally, you know, we got another up and coming actor who's going to get one one of these days, Andrew Garfield. Who was also nominated? Yeah, Dude is, oh, he was nominated uh, for for best actor. Yeah, that was his second time because uh, he was also nominated in that uh, Hacksaw Ridge film for best actor. So he'll get there someday, you know. Yeah, someday. He's still young; he can do it. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and don't yeah. everybody don't don't let this distract you from the fact that uh, Samuel L. Jackson won his first Oscar. Uh, this past weekend, so uh, an outstanding career. This man is finally getting. He didn't even Oscar, win. So. Did he not? It that was like an award they give you. It was like a lifetime achievement award. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> he deserves an Oscar. Then never mind. I, I take it back. He does. He just deserves an Oscar. That man needs to get one before he retires or either uh, dies. You know so. I think they said he's got uh, the also, most box office sales or something oh, like yeah. that. So uh, I think he's been involved in like yeah, uh, uh, and a lot of high grossing movies. I mean, thanks to thanks to his time in Marvel. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, this isn't the same. I mean, this is still about an actor, but uh, kind of a different. Uh, did you hear about Bruce Willis uh, retiring? I did, I did. Yeah, yeah, which is it's extremely sad, you know. I ha- I hate that he has has that uh, disease, you know. That, and and uh, what is it called? A aphasia. Aphasia. Yeah. Yeah. The disease is sad. He probably should have retired like ten years ago. But yeah, probably. Because <laughs> lately he's just been in the films where he's just there to show up and have his name on the poster, you know. Yeah. But so. Good, yeah. for, good for him for you know finally taking taking the time he needs and hope i mean i don't think can you can you get better from that or is that just you got it and it's it's done i, I don't think so if i'm not mistaken i think it's like a precursor to another disease like uh alzheimer's or something i don't yeah, know yeah i think that's what it is yeah so because it messes hopefully. with your like cognitive abilities so I have no idea, but hey, man, we'll always remember Die Hard. Yippee-ki-yay, Mr. Falcon. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I feel like we've, we've kind of definitely covered the slab. It was, in my opinion, it was great. Um, but also the amount of think pieces that I had to see the following two or three days Dude. it was it was torture it was torture torture because everybody had the most serious opinion on something that was just it happened it was there <laughs> move past it yeah some celebrities like daniel radcliffe he was in the news because they asked him about it he's like nah i'm already bored from it so i don't want to give my opinion <laughs> yeah like everybody was, doesn't need to give an opinion on it um i got tired of i got tired of the opinions after like the first day it took yeah. me about two days to get tired of all the memes because they were pretty good <laughs> <laughs> yeah the memes of uh uh chris rock's character in uh madagascar, madagascar. and uh, <laughs> Will Will Smith's shark, shark tail character. <laughs> yeah slapping each other i do i saw one edit that was really good of him slapping chris rock and then chris rock doing a backflip and like falling down and just like basically uh get knocked out by that slab like it was that was a good edit but uh that's probably my most favorite one 
But um, yeah, just just and then like what Amy Schumer saying that she was like traumatized or something from oh her, I like, saw somebody slap somebody I'm so traumatized. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, you don't see no fights like they'll get on these television shows and talk about fights they used to get into in their childhood and everything else. Heck, some of them have seen people get shot in real life on these movie uh, sets, but yeah. uh, <laughs> you see somebody get slapped and man, everybody loses their loses their minds. Yeah, Traumatizing. I don't know yeah. if I'll ever be able to go on because I'm afraid yeah. that I might see black on black violence again. People getting well, slapped on stage. <laughs> yeah. Um. But speaking. Hopefully um, next year it can be black on white violence. Black guy slaps a white dude. Maybe. Fingers crossed. Maybe we maybe we finally get uh, an invite to the Oscars for uh, outstanding <laughs> uh, <laughs> podcast, and then I can slap you on stage. Dude, I'd love it. <laughs> I'll. I'll take it like a champ, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I won't even act like Chris Rock. I'll just, like, fall to the ground. I'll put on a show. Like, hey, somebody slap me. I'll fall down for the cameras. Talk about Jim Carrey. Be like, yeah, I'm really about to sue for emotional damage right here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, I mean, it happened. It, uh, it's, a, it's a good story. Something that people are going to remember for probably ever. And uh, yeah, but uh, I guess speaking about violence, I guess we can go into some more violence and talk about this, uh, in my opinion, incredible Batman movie. So, um, so yeah, Jared, what are, your, what are your thoughts on this new Batman fil- uh, film with Robert Pattinson? I loved it. It was literally worth every bit of the three hours that it was. Because from the opening monologue, when you actually get like Robert Pattinson narrating it, I'm like, holy cow, this is going to be a good film. Like we're getting it from his perspective, not just watching it. So glad that I didn't bring Jaden because they really pushed the limits of PG-13 in this film. So, uh, but man, I really liked it. Obviously, he doesn't have to be some huge bulk dude i don't know why people are commenting on his physique but uh it was like really good the fact that he's like an early batman i love the batmobile scene when they introduce it for the first time because it's like they are literally trying to scare you with the batmobile and i think it's great uh the riddler like the zodiac killer in this film really really cool twists i i like that too Catwoman, Zoe Kravitz is great. She's a uh, she's great in this film. One of the coolest things I thought was how they implemented dark humor, <laughs> like because uh, you don't think the film should be funny, but then you get these scenes like, hey, spoilers, beware if you haven't seen it by now, where like uh, Zoe Kravitz, Catwoman is using his contacts that record everything, and <laughs> he's going through the club or she's going through the club. And he's just narrating. He's like, yeah, I fought those guys yesterday. Looks like I broke his nose, busted his upper jaw. And I'm just sitting there like laughing. I'm like, this is hilarious. Like watching him <laughs> recount the people's nose that he's broken and everything. <laughs> I thought it was like some really good dark humor. And uh, I don't know, dude. The ending, the ending was probably a little bit too long with the uh, final battle and everything. But I thought it was still... Really good. Really good film, dude. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, Robert Pattinson's trilogy. Oh, yeah, bro. I mean, I thought I thought it was great. I, I still want to see it a second time. I haven't seen it a second time yet. But um, I really thought that this almost maybe might be better than The Dark Knight, you know? It is. It is. Don't let anybody tell you it's not. Those are just uh, people that are still riding on a dead actor's coattails. Because oh, uh, we don't have to go that far. I mean, even we do. Even, we do. Even, no, bro. Listen. Even even with Heath Ledger, if, even if he hadn't died, 
even if Heath Ledger hadn't died, that was a great performance. That was a great movie that could stand a, like even if there wasn't even a, the Batman in that movie, that would have just been a pretty good uh, crime drama movie. So, I mean, I, I I do think that The Dark Knight is a really good film. So, I mean, I think so too. I'm just saying, like, literally, think about it like this, okay? Heath Ledger is like the only person to have ever won an Oscar for like a comic book film. Okay. He won it posthumously. Now, let me give you all this statistic. Okay. If he didn't die, he probably would have lost to Robert Downey Jr. for blackface in Tropic Thunder for supporting actor at the no, Oscars. There is no way that he like, he gave some- that performance I'm, I'm not. On I feel I'm like not I discounting the performance. I think it's great. I'm just saying, as far as Batman films go, I really, really like the Batman. Oh, I yeah, think. No, I, really I think like story wise, too, story wise, it's just like a tier above the Dark Knight for me. The story. I'm not discounting Heath Ledger's performance. He's probably the best Joker we've ever seen. Uh, I'm just saying, as far as Batman stories go, we don't have to lie. Okay, this film is probably better. Yeah, I, I mean, I feel like overall, uh, Bruce Bruce Wayne was, um, and just like you know, with the way they balance their their the story and the characters. I mean, then yeah, I mean, I feel like this is definitely better than than uh, than the Dark Knight. But maybe the, maybe it just holds a special place in my heart. Like I don't know, uh, nostalgia can do that to people. Uh, yeah. Well, plus Robert Pattinson's, he doesn't really have like a Bruce Wayne character yet because he's so um, consumed by Batman, dude. Like in that film, he is literally in that costume for like 80% of the movie. Like I mean, he, that's all he does. I think that's that's his Bruce Wayne. Like that. Not, uh, stay with me here. Stay with me here. Uh, the way that he portrays Bruce Wayne is just being extremely depressed and not even wanting to be basically himself he wants to be the batman at all times basically um that's that's his portrayal of bruce wayne i think it's really good like and the fact that uh they they include him having the uh the makeup uh, on his on his face it just added that extra layer of like kind of like i want to be ready at all times that like, I'm not even going to wash this off of my face half the time, you know, like, uh, yeah, I, I, I think he did a really good job as Bruce Wayne because I mean, most of the time they just show Bruce Wayne as being just this, just this, uh, billionaire guy who's, uh, like, especially like, um, uh, Christian Bale's Bruce Wayne, just, a a playboy, uh, yeah. and kind of a jerk half the time. But, um, no, I feel, I feel like uh, Robert Pattinson did something new and different with his uh, Bruce Wayne. And, yeah, he should be committed on that alone. And Gotham has, like, a real nightlife vibe in this movie, man. Like, Gotham the city stands out, whereas in this film, they don't just tell you that Gotham is a complete dirt hole. You know, like, it actually shows that, hey, This city sucks. (laughs) Like it would really suck to live in this city. Uh, And they actually show that in this film Uh, because like in, you know, Christian Bale's trilogy, Gotham looks pretty cool. And, you know, in the daytime, but nighttime comes around, then it gets all crappy in this film. It's just crappy all the time. (laughs) Like that's how the city is. And um, also, I mean, we haven't really touched on uh, the supporting uh, characters yet, but Colin Farrell did an outstanding <sighs> job as uh, as the Penguin Man. Like, it was so good. And I like that my favorite scene with the Penguin is when they, <laughs> after, after uh, the car chase and they catch up with him and, you know, they have him all tied up and stuff and they're trying to figure out what route a lot of stands for and then they get on the website and all this stuff and then they figure it out and they leave him and then he's just jumping around he's like y'all gonna leave me here like this like that yeah that was that was a great scene 
And, um, uh, you know, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, uh, really good. Um, yeah, uh, Gordon, because uh, he was Jeffrey Wright, dude. He's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't commissioner yet until, like, did they officially name him commissioner at the end? No, I don't think so. Okay, so he's still not a commissioner yet, but um, – he did a he did a really good job. I like that. I like the kind of back and forth rapport that he has with Batman. You know, because I mean, it it's always it's always so funny to see the relationship with Gordon and and how much he how much he basically adores Batman for doing what the police can't do uh, at first. Until I mean, of course, uh, you have stories where Batman gets gets portrayed as evil, and then Commissioner Gordon has to has to cut ties with him but just that just that uh fantastical just like love that he has for batman all the time is, is so good and i think they played it really well in this in this movie how about that scene in the department where you know he basically tells batman to punch him yes. Then, uh. yes he's like all right dude i'm gonna give you this key <clears throat> like how am i gonna get through he's like well you punched me in the face and... <laughs> and then when they meet up later, he's like, "I think you could have pulled that punch a little, a little less back or something." Yeah, doesn't he say that he did? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, that was that was good. Um, so that was like, I, I, I like, I like Gordon. Um, I mean, of course, the Riddler, like, um, just being that kind of like, uh, just having that kind of like grimy just feel like a internet hacker uh yeah. kind of just feel to it and having his like little followers uh backing him like QAnon and stuff like that that was that was that was really good I like I like that touch to it and um I like I like that his that his plan kind of wasn't thwarted until the end. Like you, you get to see him completely blow up that seawall. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that, that worked out for him, which I, 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 I do have a, uh, a soft side for villains. So I was, I was glad to see that his plan worked out a little bit. Um, but um, I was also glad to see that, that Batman was, uh, was there to save the day or at least pick up the pieces and not have it be a worse day. I just thought the writing was really good, man. Like, yeah, the fact that Riddler gets locked up and he's also basically looked up to the Batman as an idol, and then he's going crazy realizing that Batman is not on his side. I'm like, yes. yeah, that's pretty good. And then his plan basically still gets drawn out, even though he's not able to do it himself. I thought it was really good writing. Uh I don't know if you watched it, the uh, the cut scene with their version of Joker. That's that's where I'll say I don't I don't know if I'd like that version of the Joker all that much, you know. Um, I don't know. I would definitely rather see him in like his own element and stuff. I mean, I like the kind of world building they're doing to where they're showing that like Batman and this Joker already have. Um, history and probably batman put him in asylum in, in asylum in arkham um and so you know and, I, and I, don't, I don't think he's going by joker uh yet but i i kind of like how gruesome it is though how his face and his head is just all messed up like yeah. completely messed up uh so i mean i feel like if they were to keep going with this uh, Joker that he's just probably going to be a completely demented guy. Like he's probably going to be worse than uh, Heath Ledger's Joker. And I mean, I'm, I'm down for that. I'm definitely here for that. Dude, I got to tell you, <clears throat> so I'm a huge fan of, of going to the movies. Now, obviously this movie is dark, like story-wise, also, lighting-wise, you would think that you wouldn't be able to see anything in this film. But whoever the cinematographer is, man, they did a great job. Because like the way that they do backlights in the clubs and in the streets, 
like it's it's still a pretty dark film, but you see all the action that's going on too. Like it's it's also yeah. pretty well made. So uh overall, I thought it was top notch. Probably probably the best Batman film out there. Now you know we can debate Joker, but I'll say like story wise, I don't know, man. It's pretty hard to top that. No, yeah, they I feel like they did a really good job because I mean like what Bat Batman is only in his second year uh in this in this movie. And I mean, he's it's kind of obvious because he's still getting his ass kicked a yeah. lot of the times. He's dude, he's still getting his ass whooped. His suit, I don't know if you noticed this about the movie, but up until the very end where he has to use like the uh the adrenaline shot to get back up, he is taking bullets, dude, and oh, beatings. Yeah, no, it, like his, I want to know what his suit is made out of because that thing is strong. Yeah, like he's just like continuously getting shot nothing's happening to him i'm like dang man this guy just keeps on going like i i'd start to think that this batman is superman by as many shots as he's taken oh yes for uh, um, and um alfred i almost forgot um, i was about to bring him up andy circus yes andy circus as alfred was really good i'm i thought they were going to kill him off i was going to be kind of upset because i wanted to see more of him in this movie um but for the future, I'm sure that he'll re- make a recovery and everything. So I- I'm sure we haven't seen the last of Alfred Pennywise. Um, but is it Pennywise? Is Pennyworth? <laughs> yeah, Pennywise is the uh, yeah, monster clown the, from Stephen. Clown, yes, uh, Stephen King. <laughs> excuse me, but um, yeah, I'm I'm glad we haven't seen the last of Alfred because I mean, I don't. They just they did such a good job with the casting and the writing in this movie. Yeah. Oh, you know what? You convinced me, Jared. It is. It is absolutely better than, than The Dark Knight. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it is. I know. Look, yeah, it is. Look, looking back on it, it's it's amazing. The music, that score, that that uh, the Batman theme, I mean, yeah. I feel like, I, I kind of feel like it's a little kind of one note and it, it, it plays, it plays off the, uh, the Imperial March from from Star Wars, um, or at least it gets heavy heavy influence from that. Um, but like, I don't know. It, it still matches the tone of the movie because I mean, Batman is scary in this movie. Yeah, dude, Batman is scary. Like I said, that uh, first scene when he gets introduced, yeah. I'm like. God, when he walks out of the of the shadows and you know but the way absolutely. they tease him, you know, like all the all the other scenes of criminals like looking in the shadows, and I'm just thinking like, dang, when's he gonna come out, man? Like, and then when he finally does, they're like, yeah, dude, everybody fears the Batman. Like he is no joke in this movie. Yes, bro. So I mean, I'm I'm definitely excited, and I hope that they you know are able to keep this momentum going. And these other movies, if I mean, you know, that hopefully there are more movies. I know they're talking about making a Arkham Asylum TV show for HBO Max. So I mean, I'm I'm excited. I mean, I I, I literally always sound like a comic book fanboy, but like I'm super excited. Oh, um, have you have you seen the first episode of Moon Knight yet? I have. Yep. I have not. <laughs> I've been, bro. I've been so caught up with uh, Snowfall, and then Atlanta just came back again. I've, I've been, I've been caught up, man, watching stuff and working and stuff. Uh, I've not been able to catch Moon Knight yet. I'm probably gonna wait until like maybe the second episode is out too. Um, That's probably good. The first episode, uh, it's good. I like it, but it, it really leaves you wanting more at the end of the first episode. Like they should have released the first two together. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, uh, then yeah, I'll watch those. I'll watch those together. Um, and I want to take back what I previously said about Snowfall. I don't know if you remember or not when I was talking about it, when we were talking about what we were watching. This might have been last episode or a couple episodes ago um, when I said this, this isn't going to be a show I'll probably binge. It's probably like, uh, you know, one episode at a time or half an episode or something like that. No, it started to heat up at the end of like the second season and I, I think I watched, I watched like three seasons while I was, while I've uh, been here. So I'm completely caught up. 
I I binged the hell out of that show. So like, yeah, it's 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 pretty good. It's pretty good. Sweet, isn't Atlanta back on? Yeah, Atlanta's back. Yeah, nah, I just I just said that, dude. Sorry. Sorry, you, don't bro. Listen. you don't listen to me, bro. I phased out. If y'all been hearing me sniffling and everything during this episode, <laughs> I literally, I don't know what's going on. I, I beat COVID, right? And now I'm struggling with sinuses and everything. So I'm starting to think that I've developed more allergies along with the dairy allergy later in this life, you know? Damn, I used to never no. have any allergies. So life is getting crazy lately. I hope I don't get no develop no allergies, bro. I mean, I ha- I don't have any, so I feel like I'm good. I used to not. Now I I have at least one, and I uh, I probably have more. I'm gonna ask the doctor about it in a couple of weeks. So <laughs> is this what old age is, man? Freaking, uh, we're out here out here losing our hair and developing new and weird allergies. I guess so, dude. I'm about tired of it personally. Like, uh, <laughs> it's not like I'm not trying to do my best. You know, if if there's a god up there listening, hey, dude, I'm trying to work out and everything, and you, you just keep hitting me with this crap. Like, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? So, hey, man, take it, take it on the chin, I guess. Take it right on the cheek, like Chris Rock. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get the get the life slap going, <laughs> dude we could say final thoughts on this and then we'll close the show, but Will Smith trained like as a boxer for his Muhammad Ali film, the man was like basically up on both of his feet when he slaps Chris rock. I'm like, don't you know to plant your feet at least so he can feel the blunt of your slap. <laughs> Bro, it was a, it was a crime of passion. He didn't. And I feel like he probably, he probably realized what he was doing about, about this far into the slap. Mid slap. His yeah, feet were probably, in the air. He probably realized what he was doing and was like knew it was wrong. But like, I mean, you gotta commit at that point. Dude, for somebody who's had such a good, nice guy image for so long, like Will Smith just ruined it in a matter of seconds, like across the world for everybody. <laughs> that's that's hilarious. I mean, I don't know. I I don't feel like his his image is ruined in my opinion, but now it's just Everybody has blown this way out of proportion, and so hey, I'll probably still watch his films, dude. They said I Am Legend Two is coming out in the future. Hey, I'm going to see that. So, yeah. dude, Netflix uh, has has uh, paused the production of uh, one of his movies. So, who knows if that's even going to come out? I think it's crazy, man. He didn't even like. He just slapped somebody. Like people get canceled for just saying stuff, like. <laughs> So I don't know what's going to happen to him, but it seems like his reputation holds up. Like if they would have done something really bad, they probably should have done it much earlier than now. Yeah. So I think he'll recover. He's going to be fine. I hope so. You know, what they say most people who are getting canceled, unless it's for like sexual assault, all they got to do is stay quiet for like five months and then they're good. I mean, yeah, there's going to be a new story out and then, then you're going to be perfectly fine. I mean, nobody... Nobody really cares anymore. I mean, unless you're doing absolute terrible crimes. Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, so we would all forget about how much money we're paying for gas right now. That's, That's what right. he did. That's right. <laughs> um, but uh, are those are those your are those your closing thoughts? Uh, yeah, yeah. My closing thoughts is, hey, don't let the media fool you. Will Smith uh, just wanted to get another headline in there to distract us because I was just reading an article today about uh, a new COVID variant is starting to spread. Like, are we prepared? Well, who cares? Because everything's already lifted. I'm not going back to the COVID lifestyle, even though my body would say I probably should. But uh, I don't care. (laughs) Uh, So, hey. Closing thoughts, live your life, people. Don't let anybody distract you from the goal. You can find me on Twitter at Jared Evans. Um, man, closing thoughts for me. I don't know. It's kind of hard. Um, watch the Batman, basically. If you ain't seen yeah. it yet, 
I mean, if you ain't seen it yet and you're watching this, I mean, we kind of ruined it for you. So hopefully if you're still watching this, you haven't seen it, you don't mind us talking about it, then hopefully this kind of, you know, puts a, put a, puts a spark in your ass to go watch the movie because it's really good. Um, and um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, be safe out there, people. And um, thank you. Thank you for watching. And I mean, I know we've been gone for, for a few weeks. So if you're coming back to watch us, thank you. Um, thank you for doing so because, I mean, this isn't, you know, this isn't our job or anything like that. So, you know, it's sometimes we have to take little breaks here and there uh, to get our, to, you know, live our lives. And if you are down with us for that, for that journey and are, and are sticking around, then yeah, you must be, you must be one of our, one of our biggest fans. So I appreciate it. I appreciate every single one of y'all. That's and right. You can, you can find me on Twitter at young without the O underscore ABG. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at unheard underscore of pod. That's going to be the same on Instagram, unheard underscore of pod. And uh, Facebook, we're we there. We, uh, we're unheard of. YouTube, we got links everywhere. We, uh, we out here. We... We places we we're, we might be places where you don't even where you don't even think to look, bro. You turn around and unheard of is there when we're not on one of our breaks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, folks, life gets in the way. We don't get paid for this, okay? Uh, you know, if if we miss two to three weeks, we're sorry. But I mean, at the same time, you could be a fan of the Thought Police and are wondering I was just about to say that. <laughs> And are wondering when the next episode is going to come out. Well, if one of their co-hosts would ever get back on our show, like he keeps saying he's going to do, but doesn't, then maybe we'd get an answer to that question. But at least you can still get to see us at least once to twice a month. Absolutely. Um, At at the minimum. Uh, Because we're going to keep making these for you, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Or until we get canceled. So until we get canceled. So that's it. Um, yeah, if if you got it all the way here to the end of this episode, thank you for listening to all my sniffles. Uh, we definitely wanted to push one out for you. <clears throat> so without further ado, we love you, we hear you, and we hope you hear us. Hear it unheard of. Unheard of.